we're teaching on uh, healing without the aid of medicine, divine healing. Uh, you have so many people today that are sick. You have different diseases that uh, that's constantly coming on the earth. And the Bible said that the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus said he came that he might have life and have it more abundantly. The abundant life is divine healing uh, without the aid of medicine. Uh, the thief cometh, he wants to kill you. He wants you to, he wants you out of the way. He don't, does not want you to be a vessel for God. He wants you to out of the way. And the way the enemy uh, wants to destroy you, he wants to destroy you by attacking your what? Health and what else? And your money. All right? That's why the enemy don't want you talking about money because he wants you broke. Because when you broke, you have no chance of supporting the gospel at all. But, you know, we teach uh, abundant life here and abundant life here. And we teach, matter of fact, we teach something, Sister uh, Teacher said, she was witnessing to some people, a person, and said, well, you know, uh, my pastor teaches everything that you need to survive in this time in this life. Everything that we need, you're taught here. So we want you to pay attention. If you hadn't gotten your healing, okay, God has several, several ways, several ways to get your healing or to receive your healing. Uh, one is according to your faith. That's uh, Mark 9, 29. You don't have to write them down. I'm just going over this. Let you know what I'm, I'll be teaching on. Um, the faith has made you whole. Uh, the laying on of hands. The anointing with oil. The prayer of agreement. And the prayer of faith. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't it wonderful that God is diversified? He has a... Uh, uh, Six ways you can be healed. That you can receive your healing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Say according to your faith, Mark 29, 9, 29. Thy faith has made you whole, Mark 5, 34. Uh, the laying on the hands, Mark 16, 18. The anointing with oil, James 5, 13. The prayer of agreement, Matthew 18, 19. And the prayer of faith, James 5, 4. Mark 11, 24. Uh, so we'll be discussing those. So uh, during this time, uh, every person in here that has a, uh, a medical condition, you receive your healing, okay, this time. Amen. All right, receive your healing. Okay, because God is uh, not going around uh, putting sickness and diseases on you. Uh, we have a very... Uh, we have a very misnomer concerning God, that God makes you sick. It's the devil and the demons that make you sick. And then I'm also teaching on the ministry of angels. You know, we talk about demons, we talk about the devil all the time. If you say that the devil has more power than God has, but you know, that's a lie. So what we want to do, we can, we want, on Wednesday nights, we want to continue condition your mind or renew your mind concerning the function of angels, angels, knowing their purpose. We already talked two series of angels, uh, lessons on angels, knowing their pur purpose, releasing their power. Also, we'll be talking about uh, angels to help you. He shall give his angels charge over thee and to keep thee in all thy ways. Psalm 91 and 11. We'll be discussing that. Also, we've been talking about uh, releasing the warriors of heaven, the angels, fighting for you. All righty. We'll be talking about that. And uh, we don't want you to miss it. If you missed it, get your CDs because you can't. Your mind cannot. Let me know your mind can't comprehend. 
Your mind span is limited. Okay? Minds, yours, and everybody's. Okay? There's only so much you can obtain. So what you do is you get your CDs, write your scripture down. I'm going to have a Bible today. Did you bring your own Bible or you just got it back there in the back? And just going to look at me. You understand? Bring your Bible. Bring your textbook. How many have been in school? How many have been in school? Okay, you've been in school, correct? All right. Did they give you a textbook? I mean, I want to know. I want to know what ship you on. Did they give you a textbook? Huh? Now, this is the most important textbook that you should have. You see, bring your Bible what? to church. Bring your textbook to church. So that means that evidently, you know, if you don't bring it to church, that means you don't miss it. It's just laying around somewhere. You don't even pick it up. Praise the Lord. Say, Pastor, you meddling already. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so bring the what? Bring the textbook. We got Bibles that for you, but bring your own. Where well, you can look where? In the Bible, because see, this, in this day and time, you don't want to flunk concerning things that concern the supernatural. You don't walk in the spirit, okay? Like Sister Norman was mentioning the tragedies and things. The enemy, if he can get, he, if he can get anybody, you don't care who they are, uh, Islam or just a plain old common person, if he can put that seed in their mind and go kill somebody, he can do that. You see, if they yield to him, you got it? If they yield to him, you can be, you don't have to be, you can be innocent. You can just be in a mall, you can be anywhere. You get the point, you can be in a club, nightclub, and the, the nightclub is not limited, uh, uh, the, the shopping mall, you can be anywhere. But the key is, is knowing God's voice and, he, and obeying what he says. That's the key. You can know God's voice and don't obey Okay, and knowing his voice, and we perhaps we'll get on the lesson uh, later on through the down through the year on hearing the voice of God, knowing the God voice of God. Have to walk supernaturally. See, in this day and time, can be in the flesh all the time. Okay, praise the Lord. Now let's turn in our Bibles to uh, Isaiah fifty-three five. The Isaiah. 53 5. And we are teaching on divine healing, overcoming false beliefs about sickness and disease. Isaiah, what? 53 5. 53 5. And I want everyone. I want everyone to uh, fifty-three five. Let's start at either fifty-three four and five, okay? And let's read it together in concise, okay? Everybody, everybody have it? Ready, read. Surely he hath bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Not going to what? Uh, get healed, you're already healed because God lives in the presence. God lives in the now. God has no beginning and no ending. God, he always existed. So he lives in the what? He lives in the presence. He lives in the now. That's why the Bible said now faith is. Uh, he lives what? Now. That's why the Bible said whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you what? Receive them. You already have it. Huh? Because God lives where? In the now. Hmm? Not tomorrow. Huh? You don't have it. You got it now. Because God calls those things 
that be not as though they were. Okay? Praise the Lord. Now, we will be teaching on that. Uh, we have had, we have uh, several members of our church. God has anointed me with uh, the word of knowledge, with healing. That means I get Pacific, I might see Pacific or hear Pacific problems or Pacific ailments. And God has given me uh, his spirit to speak the word. The spoken word. I don't have to lay hands on you unless God tell me to lay hands on you. I might get a word of knowledge and I would speak it out. And the moment I speak it out, healing takes place. Okay? Healing, healing takes place. So, I'm not a healer, okay? Only thing that I do is listen, listen to the Holy Spirit and obey what he says. See, Jesus said that I, could, I cannot do anything. I can't do nothing or anything unless I do, unless I hear my Father. You have to hear the Holy Spirit speaking, okay, to you. That's why it's so very important to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, it's very important. And I'm not a healer, uh, but I teach, also teach you that you can do the same thing. You see, because a lot of people uh, uh, have exalted ministers that move in divine healing and move in the word of knowledge has made them some type of trophy or something. But they're supposed to be teaching you. You see what I'm saying? They're supposed to be teaching you. You, you can do these things. This is why I, I, when I'm moving the gifts of the spirit or the word of knowledge, I'm moving there for an example for you. Huh? Where you can do it, where out in the highways and hedges, in the byways and people that you come in contact with, God will give you the word of knowledge concerning them. And you speak the word and they'll be what? Healed. And that word of knowledge is things that concern the what? The past and the present. Past and present. I don't know your past and present conditions, uh, but God knows. And also the design of the spirits. The design of the spirits is seeing sight, seeing in the spiritual realm. Okay, anytime you have a vision or a dream, that's the design of the spirits if it's from God. Okay? All righty. Now, we will have some testimonies. We want it from for our uh, YouTube audience that uh, uh, people have gotten healed through this ministry uh, by word of knowledge and the spoken word. Okay, now, who do we have first? I want you to come to this mic, okay? We don't want no long, drawn out. Just a moment, we want to be, what, Pacific. Okay, come on, sister, okay. Okay, come on. All right. Yes, ma'am. Name? Candy Mosley. Okay. All right. Sister Candy, uh, what did God do for you through a word of knowledge and healing? Okay, you spoke a word that somebody was having problems with their stomach. They were sick. And I stood up and you said, you are healed. And by the end of the service, I was better. And I had been sick for two days. So I saw the power of it. Praise the Lord. She saw the power. She had upset her stomach. Hey, Praise the Lord. All right, who's next? Okay, come on, sister. Don't you have something? Uh, don't y'all be shy now, man. Come on, now. Stop playing, man. <laughs> stop playing, man. We have to go to the study because, see, God, God uh, wants you to testify of his goodness. See, when you get healed, it's God being glorified. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, you call out a word of knowledge on... Um, tumors and cysts, and I had a cyst on my finger, and it was bothering me a lot. And um, after you called it out, I had gone home, and one day I just rubbed it, and it just popped and it went away. You had a cyst, cyst on your finger, mm -hmm. and it was bothering me a lot. And you called that a word of uh, knowledge on that, and I, I got healed. Praise the Lord, it disappeared. Come on, give God the praise. Okay, come on, brother. Come on. Praise the Lord. God heal men too. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. 
You had a call out a couple of years ago. The machine I run, I used to have to look back all the time, and I used to have a crook in my neck. And you hear me now, and I ain't had no more problem. I Praise the Lord. Did I call out a word of knowledge about a crook in the neck? I a word of knowledge about a crook in the neck. I used to turn my whole body around to look, but now you don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> Glory to the God. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Had a, had a word of knowledge concerning a crook in his neck. You know, when you do the same things, uh, uh, it'll affect sometimes your body or parts of your body. When you do it uh, abnormally and just keep doing it, it affects you on down the line. But how many didn't know God knew his condition? I didn't know his condition, but God knew his condition. And as a result, he stood up and I did what I spoke the word, the spoken word. We have a spoken word ministry here. I spoke the word, and he was healed. Praise the Lord. Okay, Sister Keisha, come on. Amen, amen. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Um, I have two um, areas that God healed me from. The first one was um, when Pastor Norman gave a word of knowledge concerning diabetes, and I was diagnosed um, back in 2005 with type 2 diabetes and was on medication for it. But maybe about a couple of years ago when he called that out, I went back and had all my blood work done. And he was like, well, you're no longer diabetic, so I haven't been on any medicine. I don't have, you know, eating, none of that. So I give God the praise for that. The second thing was a female issue that um, I really didn't tell a whole lot of people about. But, but I went and had a CAT scan done, and they saw my uterus being enlarged, and they were concerned about cancer um, in my uterus. And I went, I, I went back, and I, I had some more tests done, and everything was completely normal. So I give God the praise for that. Praise the Lord. I called, so, so, I called out a word of knowledge concerning female yeah, Female problems on my second um, healing and diabetes on the first. Praise the Lord. Let's give God the praise. God is the what? God is a healer. So you can get your healing. You can get your healing out there to continue to uh, listen to the lessons that I'm teaching on because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We don't only just teach the word of God. We move in the supernatural. We move in the supernatural power. You have a lot of places you just get just word. And that's good. Logos. But we also move in Rima. The spoken word of God. Okay? For your situation. You want some power manifested. Okay, brother. Come on. Praise Lord. Praise Lord. A few months back, you gave a word of knowledge on eyesight. And I've been in world in 41 years. But the life of a world at first is eyesight in 15 years. But by you speaking that word, my eyesight began to get clearer and clearer. So, thank you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. 15 years for a world. A world. Okay, and you've been in how long? 41 years, okay? So as I, I called out the word of knowledge concerning eyesight, okay? So his eyes was what? Well, they were healed. You notice he wear, you don't wear any glasses, do you? He got glasses for most of a reading. Okay, but notice his eyes what? They were healed. God knows your what? Situation is nothing too good or hard for God to do, okay? And you got a lot of people that uh, have diabetes. Okay, a lot of people. But you don't have to have diabetes. Okay, because Jesus is the healer, right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee through the Bible is walking today by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. It's his sweat. Spirit. All right. Do I have anyone else to come? You have a healing? Come on. Praise the Lord. Or any family member. See, because when you call out a word of knowledge, it can affect not just you, but it can affect family members. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Come on up here. Pastor Norman called us about a fatty tissue on my neck. He said, put your hand on your neck. He said, God, you're going to receive your healing. And I put my hand right here on my neck, and I hadn't had any problem with the fatty tissue. I'll just disappear. And I get God to go and God to honor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Fatty what? Tissue. God did what? He removed it. 
Correct? So let me, let me know how powerful the word of knowledge and the spoken word. It's very what? Very powerful. Praise God. Any more problems? Have anyone else? Come on, sister. Yes, ma'am. What did God hear you all? Come on over here a little bit, Father. Okay. Yeah. A pastor had called out a word of knowledge of kidney disease. So I stood up. He didn't know, but I stood up and I received my healing. And I also pastor teaches on uh, going to the scriptures on, on healing. So I started going to the scriptures on healing. And I received my healing that day. And to this day, that was in 2008, and this is 2016, I am healed. And I thank God for being healed now around about 10 years. And I give God the glory for Pastor, uh, the Lord spoke to Pastor about the word of knowledge of uh, kidney disease. And I was healed, and I'm still here. And I give God the praise and all the glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Kidneys. Black people suffer from kidney diseases more than any ethnic group. Okay? I have the statistics on them, but I don't have it with me right now, but I'm going to it next Sunday. They are waiting on transplants. Okay? But you don't have to wait on a transplant. You don't have to be a victim. You can receive your healing. Okay? Because Jesus is a healer. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, we need more than just being on a sick list. Okay, and praying if it God will to heal me. No, it is God's will to heal you. Okay, he bore your sickness, carry your pain, and say, but by his stripes and wounds ye were healed. So you can receive your what? Healing. Don't have anyone else that, that, that uh, uh, need to testify and talk about what God did for your body. Do you have anyone else? Or your family, okay? Because it goes outside of just you. I can call, come up here, sister. I can call out a word of knowledge, and it could affect your family also. Okay? Praise the Lord. See, we're not playing church here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you had called out um, if anyone knew anyone named Lynn. And this was a couple of months ago. Lynn is my stepmother, and she had throat cancer. And uh, she went back to the doctor, no sign of throat cancer. She had surgery. She had a feeding tube, and they said that she was going to have to keep it in for like six weeks. It was only there for two weeks, and no cancer. Praise the Lord. Good. You were telling me you were holding that testimony. Man, that's a wonderful testimony. I had a will or not call her name out. You see? And she stood up. It was her uh, stepmother, no cancer. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. See, you don't know what God, you don't know what God is doing. God been doing this by me yielding to the Holy Spirit for about, oh, I can imagine about 10 years before when I first started. Uh, I started getting these, these visions, uh, and God started speaking to me, started seeing body parts and visions and things, and uh, sometimes dreams. And uh, I just started speaking them out. Then one day it dawned on me about a year later. I said, now I'm speaking all of this out. Now I wonder is anybody getting healed. I wonder is I'm just saying something. So I, I, I asked the congregation, I said, how many have been healed? Do I Man, hands went up everywhere. So that's what? That's proof. And God also told me that I, I don't have to lay hands on you unless God speak to me to lay hands on you. But God moves through me through a spoken word. Just speak the word only and you'll be healed. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. That comes from, that comes from yielding to the Holy Spirit. See, we're not playing church in here. You see, we're not saying a bunch of old junk, a bunch of old strife and stuff like that. We're not doing that. You see what I'm saying? Our ministry is to teach you. To do what's the ministry? That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry. One of the purposes of the fivefold ministry is to teach you. To teach you how to do works of what? 
ministry. And it ain't all up here. It ain't all in here. You need to be demonstrating it out here in the highways and hedges. That's why God said, you do the work of the evangelist. And the evangelist has what? Signs and wonders and healing and miracles. What he say is you, the believer, do the work of an evangelist. All right? Not trying to show out, do this and that and that and that and get off in pride and all of that. Because uh, that's vanity. I'm not trying to show out who did this, who did this. and No, no, no. God's doing this. That's who's doing it because what I avail myself to what? Prayer and listening. That's your key. Laying before God. You can do the same thing. All right. Praise the Lord. Have anyone else? Praise the Lord. This is very exciting, Brother Theo. Very exciting in what God is what doing. Amen. Amen. Here at Rivers. Yeah. Um, you know, Pastor Norman said he teaches us to do the work of the ministry. So I had a friend that uh, kidneys had failed him. You know, he had just called out a word of knowledge, you know, and told us to go out and do the same thing to other folks. So I texted him the word. You know, he taught me how to get in the spirit, you know, hit the Lord, and then I ministered to him, texted him the word. The next day, he texted me back and said, this kid didn't start working. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, he's a believer. Can did he be the what? The same thing. See, we're not in competition with anybody because the enemy, he will eat your lunch. You understand? He want to do everything to keep the wood from going forth. But how many know we have angels? Yes, sir. And they more power than the demons. Yes, sir. Y'all got it? Yes, sir. God is what? Powerful. So he's doing the what? He did the same thing. Prayed, heard the word of God, then he texted the word to the brother and his what? Kidneys start to function. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, That's right. That's the good news. Yes, Jesus came to do what? To spread the yes, good sir. news. And some of the good news is I'm healed. I was once sick or I was like the blind man said I was once blind but now I'm sick. <laughs> Hallelujah. That can't get no more good news than that, can you? Praise the Lord. Have anyone else? Praise the Lord. All right. Praise God. Okay. Where is she? Okay. Praise God. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that. We'll get to her later. Sister Stephanie, when she comes in, she will heal of a spine condition. You got condition in her spine. And she was healed. Praise the Lord. Now, let's look at how many in here. How many in here you need a healing? You need your healing. How many need a healing? All right. Okay, now after hearing this me these messages, come to church now. Okay? You cannot uh, test God wants you to, uh, God wants you to, he wants you to be here. You know, God said, don't forsake the symbol of yourself together, like some people do. But he said, you want, he wants you to continue to uh, assemble yourself together uh, because the more you see Christ, his return, you see. So now, we have technology now, and um, the technology can be good, and it could also be bad or disturbing, okay? You got a lot of people now, you have some mega churches and things, they're real low in terms simply because people, what they're doing, they're going on streaming live, seeing the service, but there's nothing more rewarding than obeying the scripture. Right. It's being here. Amen. All right? He said, don't forsake yourself to some of together. Okay? Very rewarding. So now, if you, are, if you are desperate enough, diligent enough, you need to be here on Sunday mornings where I'm teaching on healing, or you need to get someone, or you, and you need to bring somebody with you. 
Hmm? Because it looks like everybody's sick. Hmm? And you take medicine. I've been teaching on for the past a uh, couple of Sundays. I've been teaching on divine health and divine healing and health is the will of God. Uh, I taught on for the past couple of weeks four reasons why people get sick. Uh, natural accidents, satanic attack, infirmities of the flesh, Satan, birth, plagues, germs, human error, breaking natural laws. Breaking natural laws. I taught on all of that for the past couple of something. But I'm not going to teach on it today because uh, I need to go on. But I probably need to teach it on for some of y'all because y'all, some of y'all don't even remember. <laughs> and I didn't get it on YouTube. That's the purpose, That's the purpose of me not teaching on it. Uh, I'll teach it only twice because I thought our YouTube system would be working, uh, but now it's working, and uh, I need to I need to let my audience I need to let my audience hear some of it. Okay, my YouTube audience hear some of it. Four reasons why people get sick: natural what accidents, natural accident. You get accidentally. Uh, choke on something. You can do something that's so normal, just put some cake in her mouth and it's too much of it. She was chewing kind of fast and it was sort of dry and she choked. And it was not the devil. Okay, it was an accident. Accident means you're not paying attention. Okay? So, and sometimes you can have an accident and you are paying attention. One, one day I had uh, just was crazy, man, you understand? Uh, I went to my car and the car was warm and I turned the cap of the, on the radiator and pew, And it burned almost, I, my arms, I have a scar here, some scars here. And uh, thank God it did not get in my face and my eyes. I would have been possibly blind. But that was an accident. All right? Devil didn't do that. You see, I did it. See, you got to learn how to pay attention. Okay? You can't put everything on the devil. See, something you do. Correct? Mm -hmm. That's like what? Accident. Okay? You can go out here, you got sugar diabetes. Go be healed. You can go out here, drink all the lemonade with sugar. And man, it's good too. You know, they sell a lot of lemonade in that, man. You know, they just start selling lemonade, all flavors. You want know, to get your pitcher full. <laughs> and then your sugar will spike. Hmm? <laughs> Santanica. The enemy will attack you also. Satanic attacks. Let's look at Luke 13, 11. Thirteen eleven. 13, 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Jesus called it a spirit. Okay, of infirmity. 18 years. And was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmities. That's the spoken word, right? And he laid his hands, he also laid hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and did what? Glory. God. Healing brings what? Brings what? Glory to God. Okay, she was bound what? 18 years. Notice she was bound by a spirit. Hmm? A demonic what? Spirit was in her back. And it had all what? Bent over. What you call that? All right, I can't pronounce it, but that's what I thought. Okay? 
So she was what? That's a disease of the spine, correct? Man. A lack of vitamin D. That's why it's so important to take vitamins. You don't get all the vitamins put in your foods because the, 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 the soil has been depleted. Okay? And they have taken everything out of the food that's being grown. You get my point? Pesticides and all that. So you need what? Vitamins and what? Minerals. See? You got some black folks, they're so superstitious. Huh? They're so off, they're so crazy. Hmm? That vitamins, you understand, is hoodoo. Everything hoodoo. <laughs> I can't take those. I know one. I can't take those. That's not what. That's the devil. You have just go ahead on crazy. Satanic text, infirmities of the word flesh, weakness of the word flesh, Satan, birth, and plagues and jurings. Let's look at uh, infirmities of the flesh, means the weakness of the flesh. Let's look at St. John 9 2. St. John 9. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. St. John, what, 9? In verse, what, 2? And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, who? Neither. Neither. Huh? He said, well, neither was this man, uh, neither did he sin, nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made, what? Manifest in him. Nobody, no, well, nobody but the enemy. He said, just, just be quiet, the works of God are going to be manifested. So you can misread the scripture and say that the man was blind uh, because of some sin he had or some sin his parents had. But Jesus did not say that. He said neither. Correct? But today he's going to be healed. Neither hath this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest. But today the works of God are going to be made manifest. So you can... Uh, say that infirmities of the flesh from birth. You can have a birth what defect. All right, and that's where that comes from. What that comes from Satan. Okay, you can have plagues. You got some plagues. I, I got some what, Zika virus, water contamination. You had Ebola. You had everything, and you're gonna have more diseases coming. That's why you need to keep uh, staying in the wood. And do preventive medicine on yourself too. Okay? Yeah. Preventive pre pre what? Preventive medicine. Help me out, y'all. Preventive medicine. <laughs> uh, and I want to let Brother Charles say something about that too. Okay? And uh, because you know these medicines and things that you take, you don't want to be medicine all your life. They have side effects. Medicine has side effects. You have to take some medicine, man. You got diarrhea. You nauseated. You got headaches. You dizzy. You weak, constipation. Some will cause death. So they'll have you uh, suicide dreams. Have you give you the thought of committing suicide? These are side effects. Now, yeah, they, 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 they will call, they will help you, uh, uh, they'll help you and bait the symptom. But look at all the other symptoms you got. That's right. That, that go along with it. Hmm? Probably keep your, keep your blood pressure down, but you did it. Hmm? You know that. What else? What else? Frequent urination, fatigue, tired, may call cancer, dry mouth, runny nose. 
Oh, look at the look, look at the side of that. Weight gain, weight lost, hair lost, huh? Ringing on the ears, no appetite, numbness, yeah, numbness, feet, and hands, cold feet, cold limbs, huh? From your waist down might be cold, and this butt part might be warm, huh? Side effects. You see? Then who wants to take medicine and the devil telling you if you take the medicine, you need to kill yourself. <laughs> Man, that's bad, ain't it? Pharmaceutical. Hmm? That means witchcraft. Medicine. You see, everybody owns medicine. Hmm? They talk about the crack. They talk about the what else? I, what else folks on? Meth, heroin now. And what else? Christmas meth, weed. Yeah, but how many folks own how many folks own Madison? Huh? You got a drugstore man on every corner. Yep. Mm -hmm. And everybody, everybody drunk. Six hundred billion dollars. <laughs> how many? Six hundred billion dollars. Six hundred billion dollar industry. Drugs. Annually. Annually. Hmm? So everybody on medicine. Correct? I don't see how some people survive. Some people, man, take 20 pills a day. They do 20 pills, man. Oh, huh? Some of them more than 20? Oh. Twenty on your shift, then the next nurse come along. Twenty on that shift, man. That's forty pills. Man, I can't. I know they be. I know they. I know they be sleep. <laughs> sleep, sleeping. Make you sleep and drowsy. Let's see. So, people have, in this country, have uh, gotten away from God's healing because medicine in doctors are so convenient. I don't knock the doctors and I don't knock the medicine because it will at least keep you alive. And, but you don't supposed to stay on it. It'll keep you alive as a pacifier. Medicine is a pacifier. To keep you alive until the manifestation of your healing comes forth. See, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. You're not supposed to be on medicine and drugs, man, all your life. You don't supposed to because Jesus, that means that Jesus' stripes was in vain. He took a uh, beating on his back. With a cat of nine tails of spikes on a belt. And every time they hit him, chunks of flesh came out of his body. But it was for who? It was for you. That's right. Not just salvation, but healing. Salvation and healing goes together. Okay? Now, pl plagues, germs. Germs. You can stay, you can help yourself. There's a lot of germs around here. And... You want to make sure that your immune system is built up. Certain vitamins that you can take for your immune system to keep it healthy, to fight off diseases. Okay, but you can wash your hands. That's real tough. You can wash your hands. I ain't talking about no little padded thing here. <laughs> you know, just go to it. Just go to the uh, thing here. Day up in the soap. Get your name, you gone. No, dude, you are still on your hands. Come on. Huh? And the first thing you do is put it in your mouth. Or you eating something, you kicking at it, and you're, what you doing? Germs going in your what mouth. Hmm? You might have uh, uh, washing your face at night. You need to wash your hands first. If you don't, germs, what? They're going into your skin. Come on. Now, Sister, what my mic? <laughs> Sister Keisha, come here.
she is a registered testing. What are you, Sister Keisha? I'm a licensed practical nurse. Okay, now, do you think that a nurse, you playing around with people's bodies, open wounds, all of that. Okay. Some doctors, they make a whole lot of mistakes also. They make some mistakes because they don't wash their hands properly. Huh? So now they train you to do the same thing. I don't knock nobody's profession. Like I know everything. I don't do that. And I don't want you knocking mine either. You got it? Now, now what is the proper way that they taught you all how to wash your hands? Um, when we wash our hands, we uh, turn on the faucet first. We get the soap, we wash it, and we sing the happy birthday song twice. But when you wash it, you want to wash from going this way down because you want everything to fall back into the sink, not like this coming back on your arms or whatever. And then you would rinse. You take your paper towel, you dry your hands really well, you take another paper towel, you cut off the faucets, and you take another paper towel, you open the door to let yourself out. So that you don't want to recontaminate yourself. But most of the time, come on, Mike, back home. Most of the times, people are lazy. I wash my hands and sing happy birthday twice? Come on. Have no patience. You want to go grab that food, man. Huh? You want a holy baby. Hmm? Now notice. Happy birthday what? Twice. Twice. And rinse thoroughly. Okay? Paper towels, and then you turn it what? Wash it off with a paper towel. If you don't, whole lot of hands been on that. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you get ready to go out. You get your paper towel. Go on out the door. Mm -hmm. When you get out the door, you put the paper towel on the floor somewhere. <laughs> huh? A lot of times I put my arm up there, but they had a door like it's got a knob, just like this here. And sometimes if they don't, I get my paper towel, push the door. I'm at the door now and hold it, my arm here, boom, at that. I don't carry that paper towel with me. See? And then if you count money, realize how many people have had their hands on this money. Man, it's dirty. Huh? It's, man, it's dirty. Bunch of this money. Man, I don't see some of the nastiest dollar bills, $20 bills, man, I ever seen in my life. I said, man, where they get this from? Where they get this from? Hmm? Test. That's it. So you cannot be what? You can't be in a hurry to not what? Wash your hands because you got what? Germs out of here. Diseases out of here. You got it? Come up with something. You don't even know how you got it. But I don't know. And keep your hand out of your mouth. Okay? Now, when you cough in, what is the proper way to cough in your yarn? Hmm? What about? Bend in your elbow. Right in. That's the proper way. Okay? But most people, what they do? Right here. That's going well. That's going in your hands. That's going well in your mouth, your hands. Correct? Correct. Just give me some, some etiquette that people don't teach you. 
God. You know, y'all need to be thankful. Even if you don't even obey. At least you know. You're already thankful for these lessons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Human error, breaking natural laws. You can break a natural law by jumping off this building and getting on a ladder that's shaky. The ladder not level you up on it. <laughs> Nobody's there to hold the ladder. You haven't, you haven't found, I can get up here, didn't move before you know it, you gone. Arm broke, leg broke. See, now what, is, what, what did you do? You broke a natural law. Correct? Okay. You can be speeding down the highway. It says 60, you 80. 40 in a, 40 in a neighborhood and you going 80. All of a sudden, you what? You hit somebody, you hit a tree or somebody. Then you what? You call yourself, you know, because you're sick. You have an internal interest. So a guy, man, I don't know how he hit that pole. But he was high. You saw that way in uh, uh, Glen Oaks? Oh, you saw one in Midfield. Okay. Yeah, don't know how he hit it. Just one ran into a pole down there in Glen Oaks in the entrance where we stay. And he was in a van. And the dude, he looked high. You understand? <laughs> So that was what? That was a natural accident. If you're high, you're going to drink. Huh? You need to be high at home. You can fall out. And <laughs> huh? I don't cuss nobody out. I don't cuss your wife or your children out. But you can be at home. Just lock the door. <laughs> whatever, whatever the devil tell you to do, it tell you to holler and cuss. That's what you do. <laughs> but you not, but you are not harming anybody. You got it. You ain't messing with nobody, okay? And you not don't get under nobody's wheel and stir it like you go like you all that. You know what I'm saying? You drive and all of a sudden you are going this way and you going this way. Come on. See, it's time for foolishness. Foolishness lies in the bosom of a child. It's time out for being what a child. I know that I was childish some years back and grown up. One say didn't know nothing about the wood. You understand? I was taking all sorts of drugs and things. You understand? Ha! You see what I'm saying? One time we took some some uh, red devils, and you call them uppers. <laughs> keep your keep your all what all up here, all up here, man. And then I was saw so I got behind a guy that was. No, I was in the car with with him. And man, well, I thank God that I'm living today, that I made it home. About four or five was in the car. This brother man was driving, and man, he would, he would go on the other folks' side. I said, ooh, Lord, that must be. Don't tell me you can't call on the name of the Lord. A sinner? Mm -hmm. I said, dude, man. Man, he like this here. And something wrong with one of his eyes, too. <laughs> and then I'm sitting in the car, and the car was spinning. But I knew that this dude was getting on, he was going on the wrong side. Although my, I was spinning around and spinning around in the car, I knew he was not in the right lane. <laughs> See, so you can do what? Accidents. Mm -hmm. Breaking natural laws. Okay? Breaking natural laws. Well, you can get yourself killed. Or you can kill somebody. Or you can hurt yourself for life. Correct? Correct. You can eat too much. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think y'all want to get on that one. <laughs> and great natural what? Laws. Isn't that right? Call saying what? Sicknesses and disease to come on you. Correct? Correct. By just eating stuff that you want to eat. Or to, it's good. You can eat anything. But eat it in moderation. You have to train yourself. Okay? You have to train yourself. Don't eat a whole slab of ribs. Hmm? Just eat your bone or half a bone. No, but that flesh, that devil's no, no, uh-uh. You, you, you eat me. That sauce be smelling. Come on, eat me. How many know ribs talk? <laughs> Food talk. Donuts talk. Come eat me. Don't pass by. And see, that's, that's the power of suggestion. See, that's why they put all this stuff on television. That's right. You got it? Right. Right. They got over here in, uh, what, what is that, Old Charlie's? They have, a, they have a new menu out. And they call it some type of hot. What they call it? And everything, man, y'all don't see that sauce on it. Man, look like you can go through the TV and get it. Hmm? They got it in ribs. They got it in chicken. Hmm? See, that's the power of suggestion. So here you are, uh, 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 be the Lord for healing, and you got, you got sugar, you understand? And that salt has sugar in it. And then you, you eat pork, and you got high blood pressure. But your power of suggestion got you. You're not drawing a little nigh to God and you're not resisting that. See, the enemy bringing you the power of suggestion to your mind. Your imagination is, is, is reality to God. Your imagination is reality to him. Let me tell you how it's reality to him. He said, when you look upon a woman hmm, and desire to do what? Lust after her. You have already sinned. So that's really what it, it God calls what our imagination, what reality. See, so now when you look at them ribs and things, uh, it's going to manifest. Mm, all that sweet sauce and stuff. Mm. Now, I like, <laughs> let me throw it in a minute. I like, I like, uh, I like pies. I don't like cake that much. So it's not that you like cake. It's all right. You understand? You can have a cake or you I might not even touch it. You know, I like caramel or something, but I don't, I don't uh, major in cake. But I like pies. Good old apple pie. Good old uh, uh, lemon meringue pie. Coconut. I like cherry pies. And ain't too many people cook cherry pies. But here is what old Charlie. Here they got so you can get a <laughs> when you get a free slice of pie. And they said they brought back the cherry pie. Brought it back. And they got them luscious cherries in them, man. You know, and I hadn't had a cherry pie in a long time. I had some, but they wasn't no cherry pie. I'm talking about the real cherry pie. They made the real one. So I told Sister Num, and I said, Sister Num, man, I don't want no peas. I don't want no slice. I said, Sister Num, when do they sell the whole pie? She said, yeah, I, said, I believe, you know, we'll call. So Sister Num, she was helping me out. I said, we'll call. <laughs> we'll call. You see, but I'm going to get me a cherry pie. But I'm not going to eat it all at one time. Might be tempting. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have no sugar in anything, but I don't want to get anything. You see. So you can do what? You can break natural. <laughs> Laws by eating the wrong thing. Now, some of y'all going to get on up out of here today. Because I done made you hungry and y'all going to eat the wrong thing. Fried foods 
is what claws, claws up your arteries. Mm -hmm. And raises your cholesterol. Fried foods. Mm -hmm. Nothing no better than uh, fried chicken for black folks. <laughs> Love it. Chops, pork chops. Yeah, don't forget the pork chops, baby. Mm -hmm. And then some good old collard greens and ton of greens with the ham in it and bacon. Get a season and ham hocks. In it. <laughs> All that's what? All that's grease. <laughs> mm -hmm. The vegetable is good for you, but it's saturated with what? And you got sun oils that they mess you up too. You see, because look at the fried food. You got the skin that's bathed in it. Huh? You got the what the, you got the inner side that's bathed in it and you eating all of that. Hmm? But now eat you some meat. Because you don't want all timers. All timers is a lack of protein. And it is a American disease only. Nobody get all timers but American people. Because they done told you that uh, your cholesterol needs to be real low. You need to eat some meat, dude. You need protein where right here. Your brain is what has protein in it. You need to eat you some meat. Okay? You have to eat it fried. Huh? You can do what? Bake it. Salt what? Salt it. Grill it. Huh? You have to eat it fried, but eat you some meat. Hmm? There'd be no hog game when I eat you some. Okay? All right. <laughs> okay, now. Um, so we talked about four reasons why people get sick. Number one is but Natural accidents, number two is satanic attacks, number three, infirmity of the flesh, uh, number four is human error, breaking natural laws. Satanic or infirmity of the flesh or the weakness of the flesh means Satan, birth, and plagues, and what? Germs. The scriptures are clear that healing is for us today. Let's look, I'm going to look at one scripture, and uh, I'm going to be through. Let's look at third John. Now, let's look at it. Psalms 103 1. I'm read Psalms. 103, 103, and let's read verses 1, 2, and 3. Let's read together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases. Hallelujah. 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 He says here, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Benefits. God has benefits. See, if you don't discern the benefits, you won't be able to receive. Benefits. It's benefits in God's will. And I forget all thy nations who hit it all of thy diseases. Who it, for, oh, wait a minute. Bless the Lord. Let's do the second verse. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all of thy iniquities? What are the benefits? Who heal it? Who what? Who forgiveth all of our sins? All of our iniquities? Who do what? Heal it all of thy diseases. Oh. 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 That's a benefit. Hmm? Who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. All of thy diseases, that's a benefit. 
And you want to partake of all your what? Benefits, don't you? When you're working, they're taking Social Security out. And when you come up age to get your Social Security, you, that's a benefit. You want it, don't you? Don't you want it? That's a benefit. Likewise, Jesus left us some what? Benefits. Didn't it? Now, no, another thing, too. And I said, okay, I'm going to mention that. Now, uh, praise the Lord. All righty. Um, uh, how many, who is in here just specifically? Or you might have gotten healed and specifically bothered with a big toe. Not all toes, but just one big toe. That's, that's standing out there that really hurts you. Do I have anybody? Big toe. Big toe. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we command this big toe to be made well, to be made whole in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you and we give you praise. Now, she received her healing. Just like she received a tissue. Okay? I had a word or not, and Sister Carla didn't tell me. Called me up and said, Pastor Norman, something wrong with my big toe. You pray for me. She didn't do that. God told me. Okay? And then I did what? I spoke the word. Okay? So as a result, she's healed. Not going to be, but she's already healed. All right, praise the Lord. Have anyone else in here that needs healing in your body today? And uh, I don't have no more words of knowledge because I didn't yield. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command every joint, every muscle, and every nerve. And I was so body to be made whole in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We magnify your name. Every head bow, nobody looking around. Have anyone today, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Have any hands. Perhaps you made them your Lord of your life. And you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a benefit. A benefit is what? Salvation and the Holy Spirit. And healing. Have anyone today you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life? Anyone you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? If it's speaking in other tongues, ask the Spirit. Have anyone today go make this your church home? Love to be your pastor. Have anyone today? Praise the Lord. Okay, praise God. All righty, let's uh, let's get ready to give. Now you can bring everybody in. Let's get ready to give. And it's.